wiring of the aux in the R7. This is the control board we're using. Got some wire laying here and stuff like that. Basically, I'll run you guys through the R7 and the aux wiring because they're getting to be very, very similar. Uh, first thing to know real quick is that if you are building your machine and you have a kind of an axis, when you're looking at the machine, this will be X, this will be Y. That's kind of important to know before we run all the wires to our controller because we want to know what axis goes where. You'll have two Y axis. These will be your stepper motors. And you're going to have some wire in the kit. And basically we're going to run the limit switches and the stepper motors all to the board. The way we're going to do that is when you set out your machine, you kind of want to have an idea of where to run the wires and where you're going to put your control box. For instance, if I'm staring at my aux or R7, I'll go ahead and give a Y here, and we'll say that our X axis is across there. Sorry, a little bang. I kind of need to know if I'm going to put my control box down here, down here, back here because it'll make a difference how long each wire gets. There's a little bit of something in the aux manual about that, but it's pretty simple. Let's just think it out before we start cutting wires. So the colors of the six core wire, this is both aux and R7, these colors were not on accident. You have a yellow, blue, green, red, white, and black. You're going to solder or do the quick uh, quick solder connectors that we send in the kits and you're going to put red to red, blue to blue, green to green, uh, yellow to yellow. Now the white and the black wire are two connect two limit switches. So after these are soldered up I'm going to have basically a Y motor sitting right here on a uh, aux and there's going to be a Y limit switch facing towards the back of the machine right here. So for this particular Y, if I'm going to put my control box here, I'm going to connect the four matching color wires and then connect the limit switch to the black and the white wire. I'm going to run this through my cable chain around back. However, uh, depending on where you put your, put your uh, control box. So that's how the motor and the uh, limit switches go together. Now, for you R7 guys, this is a little bit different. RY motors sit back here on the R7. I'm doing this as machine facing me front here. I've got two Y motors here and an X motor on one side or the other. So I gotta be a little cautious when I'm running the six pole wire on the R7. I'm going to want one wire to come, let's say I'm going to put my control box down on this front corner. I'm going to run one wire all the way to the back for the Y, but then I also have my Y limit switch on this gantry plate facing towards the rear. So when I'm running this cable, I need to put half of it well, the stepper motor wires need to go to the motor at the back, but the X limit switch wires for this pair need to be on this gantry plate. That'll make a little bit more sense as you guys are building. So in all of our kits, home will be the back right-hand corner. So the back of this Y gantry plate should have a limit switch. On your X, the limit switch should be facing towards this side and on the Z it should be on the bottom uh, should should trigger when the Z is all the way up so basically the bottom of the Z hits that back plate setting off that limit switch that'll kind of help uh, with the limit switch location question I got the other day uh, the manual for the R7 hasn't really been caught up with with the limit switches yet but they're all getting it now we're working on it. So now that we've got that done, I've got this wire down. I've got my control box or whatever I'm doing set up. I'm simply going to put these four wires, the ones that match my 
stepper motor, green, red, blue, yellow, and I'm going to do them in this order, red, green, blue, yellow. If that matches up with the board here, that's B1, B2, A2, A1. You can see that in the camera. Yep, good. So I'm going to put those four stepper wires in there, in that order, in that uh, combination from the USB end, red, green, blue, yellow. I do have to switch the order of combination on either this Y or this Y. Reason being is in our diagram here, these motors turn opposite directions. So on the Y motors, we need to switch one pair on one of the stepper sticks. So let's do, for example, on the end one again, red, green, blue, yellow. The next one, red, green, blue, yellow. The next one, red, green, yellow, blue. And then for Z, go back to red, green, blue, yellow. One of the stepper motors, you only need to flip one pole. All right? So, and that's how we get both of our Ys to work the correct way. Now, if this were my X, I've plugged in my stepper motor wires. I'm going to simply run the red and the black over to the X limit switch and install them right here. Color does not matter. Uh, we're basically breaking and making a connection. So I'm just going to slide those in there and tighten that up. Great little screwdriver for this is the one that uh, comes in some kits. Uh, good little size if you don't. It, about a number one uh, flathead is really great for this. So that's the stepper motors and the limit switches. Everything's pretty, pretty cut and dry there. Um, next thing I wanted to go over was when we leave here, we're going to go to either, either let me clean up a mess here. Well, not amazing, but we're either going to go to a spindle speed control for the aux or a spindle speed control for the uh, R7. This is a VFD uh, inverter. This is a DC voltage regulator. Now, what we're going to do, the wiring of both is, is somewhat similar. We'll do the aux first. On this green bar, down at the bottom, there is a spindle and ground. The next pair up is the PWM and ground. For the aux, we want to use the PWM and ground. Do note there is a polarity to this. There's a PWM positive and a PWM negative. We're going to come out of that into this spindle speed control. Does that focus pretty well? Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay. That's going to basically feed directly into this connector right here and there is a polarity mark on it. There's a positive and a negative on this. They have to be right. Once you get that plugged up, I want you to pull this jumper off and put it on the next set of pins. So it looks like that. It's closer to where the connector is versus the potentiometer. Uh, J21 is the connection. Now once we've come out of that, we've gone into this, we're going to feed the spindle speed control power. This power will come from our power supply. There's going to be a DC power supply in this kit, in both, doesn't matter what it is. That goes into here. Do watch your polarity. It's marked right here on the board. So we're going to feed 48 or 24 volts, depending on the system, into this. Then we're going to come out of this directly to our DC spindle. Two leads on this, there's a red and black. They will connect directly to this. You're going to get to this with the four wire that's included in the kit. So one end of this, I'm gonna make a quick note here guys. 
There is four wire in all kits for R7 and Ox guys. Trim these and keep them loose. There's more stuff coming guys and you will want those wires. So for the Ox guys though, we're gonna plug this into here. The four wire will run all the way through the cable chain and come back up to the motor and meet there. You'll make that soldered connection and then your spindle speed control and your spindle wiring for the aux is complete. Again, keep those wires. The R7, you're going to come out of the next set of pins up and use the 0 to 10 volt and ground connections. This pops open. Is that focus good? Our center good? And you're going to use COM and A1N1. That's down here on the bottom, this bottom row. It's the farthest one. Two over is A1N1. Run those wires directly from there to there. You also need to jump X1 to X3. Uh, I'll double check on that and, and may, may, may need to make a note on the video. All right, so that's connected to that. There is a jumper that we got to make in there. I'll remember what it is. And there are some P settings that we got to change in here. Uh, real quick note, I get asked all the time what this wire in the R7 inverter is. That is to remotely mount this panel. You can pop this in here. I'm sorry, vice versa. Pop this in here. Pop that in there and you can remote mount the panel. All right, go ahead and zoom back just a little bit. That would make sure we catch everything, so. All right, so again, that's, that's how we remote mount the panel. To power this inverter, we're simply gonna take the power cables that are included in the kit and we're going to power to R and S only does not get a ground wire, okay? This stays just like that, R and S only. To wire the spindle on the R7. This is in the manual again too, but I'm just trying to make it real easy here. There are numbered connectors. You saw I screwed this cap off. There are numbered connectors. One, two, three, and four solder wire onto one, two, and three. Put this back on. There's a little set screw right here. Once you get that set screw done, or once you get this part done, wired up, sink that set screw so this cap won't twist off. After that, you'll just plug that into the top of your spindle, secure everything down, and you're good to go. So that is wiring stepper motors, spindle speed controls, controller, inverter, stepper motors. Yep, that's good. Okay, last thing I wanted to cover real quick, guys. If you want to probe, you can. You'll need to cap that as well. We are talking to Panacat, trying to get that improved. Um, from your, again, from your DC power supply, that's the only thing that's not shown here. You're just going to feed the controller right here there's a positive and a negative dc power out of your spindle speed uh, out of your power supply into this if you're an aux guy that power supply also feeds this if you're an r7 guy this is the only place the power goes to all right last thing i wanted to cover was some of the newer kits are coming with the raspberry pi if this is one of your kits, all you need to do is take the supplied power supply. Uh, d uh, 220 volt guys, you'll probably get a different power supply that you will plug into. Sorry, it is actually a voltage regulator that you will plug into the same power supply you're using to power the M1 controller. It'll be a DC voltage regulator with a little end on it like this. That's one method that will do this. Anyways, plug this in, plug that into the wall. There'll be a cable included. 
plug this cable into the Raspberry Pi, plug this end into the M1 board. You'll need to plug in your uh, HDMI cable. You'll want to use a wireless mouse and keyboard uh, dongle. Pop those in there, power this up. The first screen that uh, opens should be your desktop. There will be a folder called BCNC. Click on that folder. It'll open up in both for the Aux guys, the R7 guys. Uh, all these M1 boards are programmed the way that you need to home the machine prior to being able to uh, jog around. So connect the machine, open the software, connect the machines, home it. After that, guys, you're operating a CNC. Good luck.